Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide showing a case of invasive urothelial carcinoma involving the renal pelvis and also invading into the underlying kidney. So here we have a section of the kidney. This is the region of the renal cortex. Here is the capsule of the kidney. This is one of the pyramids in the renal medulla. This is the renal sinus fat. And this region is the renal pelvis, and this is lined usually by urothelium. Here is a papillary tumor within the renal pelvis, and in this area we have an invasive tumor that is invading into the renal sinus fat as well as into the renal parenchyma itself. Let's have a very quick recap of normal renal histology. And here in the renal cortex, we can see these rounded glomerular structures which are composed of very thin walled capillaries and surrounding this we can see some tubules these are parts of the proximal convoluted tubules and over here in the renal medulla we see a different picture mostly that of tubular structures with some intervening stroma and blood vessels these are parts of the collecting ducts as well as the loops of Henle. In this region, this is renal pelvis, and this is very abnormal. Normally, the renal pelvis is lined by benign urothelium, which is a stratified type of epithelium. In this instance, instead of seeing just flat urothelium, we can see these papillary finger-like structures projecting into the renal pelvis. And this has a very classical papillary architecture of papillary urothelial carcinoma. The finger-like structures will contain fibrovascular cores and we can see some blood vessels within this core of this papillary structure. The urothelium that is lining these papillary projections is very abnormal. There is loss of polarity. Normally, the urothelium being stratified, we will see that the cells towards the surface appear a little bit more flat. This one, the cells do not really appear to have gradual flattening towards the surface. So there is loss of polarity. There is also nuclear atypia. Some of the nuclei show irregular nuclear membranes. There is variation in nuclear size, with some nuclei being much larger than others. For example, over here, we can see that there is a larger nucleus. Right next to it, there is a smaller nucleus. and Another feature is seen in this area, which is quite a lot of mitotic figures. There is one here, another one here, and another one here. And in normal benign urothelium, we should only see mitotic figures right near the base or the basement membrane of the urothelium. However, here we can see mitoses that are quite superficial going towards the surface. And that is also a feature of urothelial carcinoma. Let's look at another area where we can see the nuclear pleomorphism more clearly. And over here, we can see that there's quite a significant variation in nuclear size. For example, this large irregular nucleus is significantly larger than, say, this nucleus. So there is a moderate degree of nuclear pleomorphism. And there is also disorganization of the urothelium. So if the whole tumour were composed of these papillary areas without any obvious invasion into the stroma, this would be called papillary urothelial carcinoma, non-invasive. However, in this particular case, we can also see another feature, which is these large sheets of malignant cells that are infiltrating into the underlying stroma. And in fact, over here, we can see that they are infiltrating into the kidney itself. Here is a nest of malignant cells sitting right beside a glomerulus. And again, here is another sheet of malignant urothelial cells sitting beside a glomerular structure. So this tumor has clearly invaded beyond the renal pelvis into the renal parenchyma. And again, in this region, we can see lots of these irregular sheets of malignant urothelial cells invading into the renal parenchyma. And these sheets are surrounded by desmoplastic, very disturbed looking stroma. This case also shows another interesting feature. For example, over here, 
we can see that there are these little nests of tumor cells sitting within vascular spaces. So there is lymphovascular invasion as well of this tumor. And this really raises the risk of lymph node spread as well as distant metastases. Let's have a look at a gross specimen with renal pelvis urothelial carcinoma. Here is a gross specimen showing a bisected kidney, and this is the renal pelvis, which is very abnormal, and here is the ureter. So if we look at higher magnification or closer up view, we can see that within the renal pelvis, there is this tumor with many of these papillary frond-like structures. These correspond exactly to what we saw on microscopy earlier. So here is papillary urothelial carcinoma of the renal pelvis. We will also have to look very, very carefully and very closely at the interface between the tumor in the renal pelvis as well as the renal parenchyma and sample this very thoroughly to see if there is invasion into the renal parenchyma. And in these instances, quite often there may also be a sort of a field change with urothelial carcinoma also involving other parts of the urinary tract. So we would also have to examine the ureter as well as the bladder very thoroughly. This is taken from our online pathology resource, PathWeb, and if you would like to access this resource, it's completely free. You can find the link in the video description. If you scroll down, you will actually get a little bit more information, for example, annotated images as well as microscopic images, and you can also see some talking pots and talking slides. Hence, in summary, this is an example of urothelial carcinoma that is invasive. It is involving the renal pelvis and it is invading into the renal parenchyma. This is high-grade urothelial carcinoma. Here is an area of necrosis. And we can see that the cells are very pleomorphic. We have large nuclei and we have plentiful mitotic figures as well seen throughout the tumor and mitotic figures here again and we also have areas of lymphovascular invasion and in the background we can also see papillary urothelial carcinoma that is high grade involving the renal pelvis and these patients would usually present with gross hematuria thank you